So I had a really interesting discussion recently with a wonderful woman named Jojo of Jojo Empowers. And she really set me straight about a particular topic pertaining to intuition. And if you know me, you know I'm someone who considers themselves very intuitive. Not that this is a race or a competition. Not that there's a hierarchy of more or less intuitive. I just mean to say I'm pretty far down my personal path of evolution around trusting my intuition and really listening to it and really working with it because it's something that I've really felt like I had for a long time as someone who was born an intuitive empath, but never really used it and didn't let it really deepen and cultivate till after I was 25. I mean, I definitely had the run of the mill intuition, the, the gut feelings, the, the dawnings of inspiration. And at times I had intuition that was like better than the average, but I didn't really deepen and work with it to the degree that I would after the age of 25 and I'm 32 now. So it's been a solid seven years or so of being awakened to the fact that I have a, you know, a a gift, an intuitive gift, if not a few intuitive gifts. So what Jojo and I were talking about was this notion of intuitive mastery. And I've been getting a lot of downloads and getting exactly what I ask for in terms of career and in terms of having things come into my life that were going to grow me in all the directions that I need to experience growth and evolution and leveling up in order to ground and land all of these business ideas and entrepreneurial ventures that I know in my heart of heart and soul of souls are really meant for me. Now, everything that I teach is absolutely everything that I've learned. None of this is stuff I've read up on the internet and then tried to word vomit or regurgitate back to you without having lived it. I think that's really cringy and really inauthentic and it gets no one any results. I, I firmly believe in the energetics of everything and it gets no one It gets no one any results because I don't know what I'm talking about if I did that. And you're not really stepping in into the energy of me sharing my mastery of that particular thing, right? The whole thing that it comes down to in terms of like the whole linchpin of working with coaches, of working with anyone who's sort of sent into your path to help you level up, deepen, or blossom in a certain direction or master certain lessons that they had to go through. Anyone that's kind of a teacher, coach, way shower, pathfinder, the, all of the magic and all of the juice and all of the deliciousness is in the fact that they've been there, done that, and have the energetic sequence, have this, this sort of blueprint of how to get out of that particular situation. And being in their energy, hearing their experience, and being in that vibrational match to someone who's come out the other side of it, like matching energies with them as you interact with their content, with you you interacting with this podcast right now is you experiencing my energy and the energy of all that I've been able to become based on all the things that I've learned, which doesn't make me any better than you. It just means maybe I'm further down the path on a few concepts that you can then borrow from and I can be a pathfinder, a way shower for you. So back to it. All of these things are things that I have mastered myself. So I really did go from a place of analysis paralysis, overthinking things, not relying on my intuition, being really left-brained about it, just thinking through everything. And that went well for a long time until it didn't, right? Until I started to realize that certain relationships and certain aspects of my life we're really blocking my intuition and it's deepening. So as I made necessary changes to my romantic relationship at the time and started changing up my life to feel better and more supportive and higher vibrational for me, I noticed my intuition was like coming online in new and more profound levels. So I went through this process of getting comfortable with, okay, the daily download. So getting insight into what what I need to do that day and really listening to myself around. I really need some sort of conscious movement. I really need to hit the Pilates today. I really need to 
have a salt bath. I really need to sit and journal and sort of free write. Like knowing those things where I would have to say kind of the first step. And I was able to, now listen to me, be empirical about intuition. (laughs) I was able to get immediate, well in the day, feedback, you know, within 24 hours or within 10 waking hours, um, a feedback because I would feel this intuitive feeling of I know I need to do some conscious movement today. And then I would do Pilates. I would do, you know, my, I always use uh, Hatha Yoga to balance my masculine and feminine energy and was really drawn to that practice in order to do so. So I do a variety of different techniques, but Pilates and Hatha Yoga tends to be some of my favorites. Um, Because I'm not really talking about exercise, I'm talking about distinctly conscious movement and sort of intuitively flowing through the movements that the body needs to do in order to move energy, to stretch, to, you know, really do what the body, mind, body, spirit is craving. And so as I would then listen to myself about that, I would feel a lot better, you know. So I got this sort of confirmation that what I had heard intuitively was the right thing to do. And that deepened, you know, of course, like getting downloads of what to do in a certain meeting or, you know, what to what to address, what to speak on, getting downloads for like a week in advance. And like the timeline of when I would get insights and info would start to lengthen. And then eventually I could get insights and read other people really well. And as I started trusting it more and I had, you know, my now fiance who we were, you know, best friends and then moved into to dating and getting to know each other we like had this dynamic so and I also had this dynamic with my best friend because these two people could be really vulnerable with me and be open and be honest and we had that level of intimacy in our respective you know romantic relationship with my now fiance and then my absolute best friend on this planet earth for many lifetimes I'm sure she and I could cultivate that level of just open, honest sharing. And those two really, really, really were instrumental in helping me deepen my ability to know that what I'm picking up on, unspoken, unsaid by others was spot on accurate. So it it deepened into that. But what really, the, the jump and the leap that I've been making lately and have been asked to make lately is really trusting the bigger picture. And so I, for whatever reason, was in this space and I'm creating this podcast recording to hopefully help someone who needs to hear this, maybe many someones, helping you understand that that's a natural part of your intuitive evolution. Don't treat it, don't treat the long term, don't treat your life calling, the bigger picture, you know, your 20, 30, 40 year plan, you know, the, the summary of a life, don't treat that as any different than just your day to days. If I've learned anything, it's that we need to just focus on the now. We can hold a larger vision if it comes to us organically and feels really resonant. But the most important thing is, is to be where you can take action. And so your physical self, your energy is present in the now moment. Know that bigger vision, but ask for what can I do right now? I feel empowered, emboldened. I feel aligned with the energy of my my path, my fated path, my future, my big vision. What can I do? You know, spirit, creator, universe, God, or any any deity that you see as the divine. Ask for the steps that you can do today. What can I do right now? Please send me that inspiration to jot down a bunch of things on a piece of paper or in my notepad on my phone. Tell me what I can do now. That's harkens back to the divinely guided steps that myself and others talk about. But it's not any different when you're looking at getting those intuitive downloads for the longer term, bigger picture. What Jojo inspired me to understand And, you know, that that nugget of information, that teaching that is what I think I was led to her to receive, what I I know I was led to her to receive, was sort of this question of, am I in alignment? Am I on the right path? Am I getting the right downloads about the big picture? And so kind of what she didn't really, she, she answered my question and confirmed that for me that yes, I'm on the right track. I'm in total alignment with my gifts and what I'm meant to bring into this world. But more than that, a, a greater, 
a greater prize was won, a greater sort of download, a greater assistance from her occurred when she said to me, you have to really look at it like you're you're learning how to work with your intuitive gifts and you're learning how to work with your intuition as a human being, which we all have intuition. It's just some of us have different and more profound and more specific intuitive gifts. It's the nature of the thing. And so what she taught me was this notion that this is just kind of the, the final part to master. We're never really done. It's always evolving. But she was saying, you feel a little uncomfortable about trusting your intuition on the bigger picture, longer term, because you haven't really been able to see and ground and understand at that level. This is a new level opening up for you. So what you need to do is just trust it like you have getting momentary bits of inspiration and intuition and being in alignment, getting mid-range inspiration and alignment and just focus on how you feel. If what you're getting, although it's long-term and long-range, if what you're getting feels positive, goosebumpy, it feels kinetic, it feels like all things are possible, it gives you a, a blissful inner peace and excitement, then you know you're in alignment. That's the right the right path. So in summary, what she was really saying is I was finding it difficult because I was trying to look at the long term and return to my analytical planner because, you know, my analytical planner self who wants to come up with a big plan and all the steps and all these pieces. When in reality, what I'm working on right now in this life is mastering using that same level of deep intuition that I'm comfortable with on a daily, weekly, monthly, shorter term basis, really using all of that same inner knowing, that that feeling, ability to feel resonance, using that in the longer range timeline. And it seems so obvious after you hear it, but, but trust me, when you're starting to work with these energies and starting to develop your discernment for yourself, it can get a little confusing. You can find yourself when you go to new levels, returning back to old habits, which is something I address in my Breathwork at Tiffany's book and in the master class is just this notion that it's very cyclical and you might find yourself doing something where you, you're like, I thought I had mastered this. I thought I had figured it out but it's really the universe taking you to a deeper level of the lesson and really helping you finish and pull it all the way through so that whatever that lesson is that you're working on integrating, whatever that wound is that you're healing, you're healing it on all levels to the depth and the core of you. And you're integrating that lesson and learning through all levels into the core of you. So what I'm doing right now and I will definitely give an update and talk about this more, kind of what I'm doing right now is to just trust myself and say, you've gotten this download, you felt that this was really resonant, you've had some other confirmations from other gifted people, you've had some insane coincidences, which I'll share. My big idea um, is kind of in stealth mode, so I cannot share more right now, but when the time comes, I'll share the story of the divine alignment and the, the crazy coincidence around, you know, my big stealth idea. Um, and knowing that these things have happened, I need to feel that resonance and just say to myself to stop myself from talking myself down off of a big vision and to stop myself from talking myself away from, diving deep on what I know to be my path because it's scary, it's overwhelming, it's the ideas are huge, the execution is huge, all these things. And it feels like just too much. Instead, I'm trying to to starve those feelings of make it smaller and whittle it down and do only what's possible and instead just ignoring them, starving them and instead saying, what if this is all very, very true? What if I'm right on the money and behaving and acting as such? Right? It's kind of like fake it till you make it, but I don't really like that statement because it sort of sounds inauthentic. Instead, I want to say like, act like it's already here. It's already happened. These things are very much in my reality. And I just wake up every day in them. Like the, the biggest idea, I'm in it. The, you know, the second stealth idea that I have, that's the second layer of this big business venture. I already have it. I'm in it it's there. And then of course, Monarch Society and all my books and masterclasses, like it's all here. It's all available. It's all right now. So in short, 
of the moment. I'm just getting really comfortable with the long-term energy and the energy of the long-term vision and just diving right in and marinating in the energy and feeling how it feels to, to pretend or envision it real. And I think for me, that's ultimately going to help me understand if it's for me, if it's truly, truly resonant and all that good stuff. So I hope what I've learned this week is helpful to you and I will talk to you soon.